existing since the past 35 years. And I just want to mention a few words about polycystic ovarian syndrome or polycystic ovarian disease, which is very much prevalent and which is very much an issue for a cause of worry for people right from young age to middle age. Now, what is this condition? This is a condition where there are a lot of a lot of significant amount of hormonal changes in the body. It affects periods, it affects fertility, it affects body image and because of all these changes in the body image, very often the patients have many social problems, they get depressed, they feel social isolation and we have to address all these different issues in the patients. Now what exactly is polycystic ovarian condition? First of all, let us address the problem of the polycystic ovaries. So this ovaries show an increase in size and they show multiple small cysts over the ovary if we do a sonography just after the period. If we do the sonography, we find that the volume of the ovaries will be increased till about say about twice or three, two or three times the normal size. The normal size being 5 cc, it becomes increased till about 8, 10, 15 cc and the eggs, the follicles which we find are, are increased from normal to about 15 to 20 small follicles which are seen after the period. So these, this is, uh, helps us to diagnose the polycystic ovarian problems. Now, what are the different conditions that the patient uh, gets in this? They get irregular uh, periods in this and I'll be coming to the other symptoms. Why are these cysts formed? These form, cysts are formed because of the abnormal hormones and the hormones which are important here are the FSH, LH and the different hormones and they are secreted little differently. And because of the abnormal hormone secretion, we get these cysts then these cysts will secrete the male hormone, the androgen. This will give rise to all the different symptoms that are seen, that is the hair growth, the pimples, etc. And these give, give rise to other problems. Then the, now coming to the different symptoms associated with PCOS. Now, we need to find at least two or three criteria to diagnose. There are many symptoms in PCOS, but two or three criteria will help to diagnose that is, that is first, irregular periods or not getting regular periods then they, they find it difficult to get pregnant uh, the patients and some of the patients may have changes associated with increase in the male hormone like hair growth, pimples etc. Some people will have excessive weight gain and some people will also show signs of insulin resistance. Into this I would like to explain to you that insulin is a hormone which is normal in the body but when the body does not respond to it, then you get insulin resistance and the person puts on a lot of weight. Without, even if they are eating normal food, they put on a lot of weight because their body is not responding to the normal insulin in the body. So in this insulin resistance is clinically also diagnosed by seeing darkish, darkish patches of, of brownish skin on the nape of the neck and in different parts of the body. Then you can get hair loss also, a male pattern type of hair loss may be seen and excessive weight gain. So these are the, all the features that we see, but we need not see all the features. If we see if even three features like sonographic appearance of the ovaries and we get uh, signs of increased, increased, uh, increased male hormone like hair growth or hair growth or we get pimples and we get polycystic ovaries and, and we get like irregular periods, that is enough to diagnose. Sometimes we do not get sonographic evidence of polycystic ovaries, but if we get other features like hormone changes, like hormone changes increase in the level of the, of the male hormone clinically or on checkup, that is also enough to diagnose. So insulin resistance with male hormone increase, all these things can help to diagnose even without sonographic evidence. Then what are the, the before coming to the, that management, I would like to discuss with you why it is important to control it and what is the problem if we do not control it. If, it, if the polycystic ovarian problem is not controlled, these patients in the long term, they are prone for excessive weight gain. They have got a higher risk of getting diabetes and blood pressure. They also have a high, higher chance of getting cholesterol abnormalities. And even in long term, if it is left uncontrolled, there is a higher chance of even getting malignancy, heart problems, etc. So what we call metabolic syndrome, that is diabetes, hypertension, all that is more if the problem is not controlled. Hence, proper control is very important. Then, how, how do we diagnose it? I told you that sonography, then the blood tests, hormonal tests are done. Just as soon as the patient gets the period, the hormonal tests are done. Checkup is done. 
and and we check check the patient's weight in comparison to the height and see if it is corresponding. Check the patient's body mass index whether uh, the patient is obese for the height or not. So taking all these investigations into account, we come to an end and a conclusion about this polycystic ovarian problem. Okay. Now what is the treatment of this? Now the treatment is actually according to the requirement. Now we need to understand perfectly that this problem is not 100% curable. We cannot say that I will give you something for 3 to 6 months like how Vikla told it and you will cure it. It is not, it is not, doesn't work that way. You have to have a continuous effort on your side to reduce this problem. And this is, in, uh, first of all, 75 to 80% of the treatment is lifestyle modification and diet and exercise. So the remaining 20 to 25% we help with medication. But you have to, like diet and exercise is a very important component. I'll be going into the details of diet and exercise shortly. Then uh, the treatment of polycystic is divided into young girls, those who just are not getting periods. Then secondly, those who want to conceive. And those who do not want to conceive but want regular periods. So young girls who are just uh, like say 18 or 20 years old and who, do not, who are not married, then we try to see, sort out the problem, what exactly is happening with them, see if they have insulin resistance, see what is their weight, give them ideas and help them to get regular periods. This may be done with either progesterone tablets or it may be done with uh, cyclic pills. So this, this, their main aim is to improve their lifestyle and to get regular periods. If they are having excessive hair growth, uh, then we have to treat accordingly, give the medication and advise local treatment for hair, hair excessive hair. That means some laser therapy and local treatment for the excessive hair growth. If the pimples are there also, we have to give local treatment as well as oral treatment, which may include uh, oral contraceptive pills containing anti-androgen agents. So this is then for the patients who are trying to conceive, the treatment is completely different. In that case, we try and find out what is the correct weight that she should be for her for her height. We try and find whether she has insulin resistance. If she has insulin resistance, then we have to put her on an insulin sensitizer. This can be in the form of metformin, or it it, it may be metformin plus myonoestradiol, and this has to be continued continued for some time till the patient gets pregnant and even during pregnancy we prefer to continue it for a period of 3 to 4 months. Why is this important to control the PCO before the patient gets pregnant? This is very important because we find that if we do not control the PCO problem, there is a high incidence of abortion and missed abortions. So we find because of the abnormal hormone level, that is the hormone level is abnormal, we find that the pregnancy starts to grow and then by the end of two, two and a half months, it stops growing and you get a missed abortion. So you will find that in the course of your investigations, you may find that if there's a patient of PCO, you have to control it and you have to take care that, that you maintain the proper treatment of PCO in the first three months so that the patient does not get repeatedly missed abortions and help the patient accordingly. Okay, so then, so this is about that. Then those who are infertility, Earlier we used to do ovarian puncture, now this is not commonly done. Now we do, do uh, we do like I told you, treatment with insulin sensitizers and then if the patient is not ovulating, then we ask them to do ovulation treatment. That means this can be done with the ovulation kit or preferably with the ovulation study. And this can be further, the chance of, of success, we can further make it increased by doing intrauterine insemination. So this is how we tackle the patients. And if the person is really got severe PCOD, not responding to the ovulation treatment and not responding, say, to repeated attempts at intrauterine insemination, then at times we have to finally give up and refer the patient for, inter, for IVF. Okay. So this is how we tackle the patient. Then, uh, I was, as I was telling, the most important thing that the patient needs to understand is that it's a continuous, a continuous effort on the part of the patient to maintain their weight according to their height. And this is a continuous effort. So we have to tell the patient specifically about the diet, how they should control the diet and maintain the calorie count and maintain the exercise. So exercise should be fairly vigorous and depending upon the age, we have to advise a combination of aerobic as well as muscle toning exercise. So one, one hour per day preferably, either if the person is young, we can advise them some uh, brisk running or brisk running or uh, you know some game in the form of badminton or swimming 
But if the person is little middle aged, then you middle aged or elderly, you can advise them brisk walking and any other exercise that suits their routine. So this should be maintained on a regular basis so that there this helps to further burn calories and maintain the weight. Also, in the diet, we have to maintain proper calorie, proper cal proper calorie control and not you know, eat heavy oily things. So in the calories, basically, what we need to be careful about is first of all, reduce the carbohydrates. The carbohydrates should be maintained in such a way that it's about one fourth of the total consumption. That means, for, for example, if the person is, is eating, like say, normal diet, then they can have two chapatis, or they can have one chapati and a bit of rice. Or if they are basically rice eaters, then they can have rice in medium amount, but they should not also have chapati. Also, the preparation should be not too oily, you know, like not, not paratha and all that, and not pulao. They should have preferably that full cut style, if you know what I mean. So that way, and all meals can be taken, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but they should be carefully thought about. Then you can have, uh, if, you, if you say simple vegetables, that can be had unlimited. Simple vegetables, I mean like a non-gravy heavy vegetable. Like if you have a heavy gravy vegetable, that becomes into a heavy dish and very oily with lot of calories. So that should be avoided. So a simple vegetable can be had in unlimited amounts. Salads also can be had in unlimited amounts, provided that it's not got an oily dressing, like a mayonnaise dressing and things like that. Okay, then also like you have to be careful about the sweet things also, that is very sweet fruits, very sweet fruits have to be eaten lesser amount, like mango and large bananas and all, they have not to be consumed. Apple in moderate amounts and you can eat like uh, sweet lime and things like that and orange now and then. But very sweet things have to be consumed lesser, even fruits. Dry fruits also only uh, like almonds and walnuts are permitted, like these cashew nuts, dates, and uh, and all these other things uh, like sweet dry fruits are preferably avoided. Okay, so uh, the main, very important for the person is to have a good amount of protein. So protein is allowed, and protein is good for the person. So protein has to be taken. If you are non-vegetarian, you can take eggs and whatever meat is all allowed. Uh, only the method of preparation should preferably not be in the form of a very rich gravy because that is again heavy. So grill or baked or something that is that is preferable in the non-veg form. Okay, in the vegetarian form also, uh, like all types of uh, like uh, what we call mook and all those things, all those things are good for you. Those are all things. All the dals are also good. They are good for protein. Paneer is also good. Uh, is also good, and all the vegetables are also good. All you should be very careful and avoid like preferably fast food like you know having lots of uh, pizza which has lot of cheese and maida and this thing once in a way it can be had but not on a regular basis. Also burgers and things like that which have a lot of cheese and mayo and all that should be preferably be avoided on a regular basis. No soft drinks should be consumed, no juices, those are all empty calories which add to the weights. Okay. So you should, you can eat a fruit instead but no juices and no soft drinks to be taken. Also, ice creams and all those things preferably avoid. Preferably avoid. So, hence I feel that that PCOD can be well managed if, if the person shows a positive initiative and regular exercise is the key. Is the key a little control in diet, taking care and eating regular regular meals of medium type. Awareness on the part of the of the patient, like the patient should be well motivated, and it is up to us to motivate the patient. Okay. So. Uh, I thank you all for patience.